I bet you could do it. You ever had a pot pie? It's kind of in a crush, a pastry kind of deal. Uh, like a pie. Yesterday, there was a muskox down in the brush. Oh, there's a muskox. Oh, let's shoot those. Where are those? Those are uh, those brant geese. There are people in this world that go looking for adventure. And then there are those that live it every day. Alaska Outdoors Television. Experience Alaska like never before. Matthew and I put in for a drawing for a permit for Nunavak Island for the fall muskox. I've been wanting to go out to Nunavak for so many years. Well, Matthew, say hi to the Bering Sea. People put in for this permit year after year for 10, 20, 30 years and don't get the draw. Historically, when you, when you do these Nunavak hunts, uh, there's very few people that live on Nunavak Island, but obviously, uh, they live there and you need to support the local community and they have some local knowledge that you can pick up on. And so we hired a transporter out of the village of Macoriuk on Nunavak Island and there's, uh, there's a few well-known transporters there. And Abe David was uh, the transporter that I used. I contacted him ahead of time, found out what I needed to bring, uh, what they had in Macoriuk that I could rely upon and then we flew on out to Macoriac. So as we're flying into Macoriac, the guy next to me in the window seat saw two muskox just not too far outside of the village of Macoriac. Of course, that got us real excited. Both me and Matthew were talking about it um, as we landed and as we were making our way from the airport to the village. So it looked like from the get-go that this was going to be an easy hunt. It was neat, once we, once we landed, we were able to walk around the, the village of Macoriac, talk to a couple people, real friendly folks out there. And a lot of those people are bilingual. They speak Yupik and they speak English as well. And so it's not uncommon to be walking down the road hearing uh, an elder speaking to uh, a young villager in Yupik. It's um, a lot of tradition, um, a lot of traditional values and a lot of traditional ways of life. Um, still exist out of Macoriac. They still do uh, a number of their traditional hunts and one of, the, one of the things that they've done for a number of years is herd reindeer. Um, I understand that they don't do the commercial herding of the reindeer anymore, but they do um, have reindeer out there and they do take a number of reindeer throughout the year. Now I think we're ready, boys. I started thinking about hunting on Nunavak Island because my father drew a tag the very first year that they opened up Nunavak Island to muskox hunting. That was the winter of 1976, and I believe the fall of 1975. He drew a tag and went out there and shot one of the first muskox off of that island. And it was a nice bull muskox that turned out to be a trophy in the record book. When you go out to the Anchorage International Airport, as you start to go up the escalators, you can look down and see the muskox that my, da my dad shot in the spring of 1976. So it's, 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 it's a really cool reminder to me as I go out to the airport, and think, wow, that's what I want to go do. We talked with Abe a little bit. We talked about uh, my plans for the hunt. And so Abe said, hey, well, why don't we go down and get into my boat and I'll take you up to the Koryak River. So that's what we did. We walked down to the harbor and we got into the boat with Abe 
and he took us upriver and dropped us off. And then from there, um, we went up this, this hill and camped the first night, um, hoping to glass for some muskox. One of the things that we had hoped for was to be able to get in Abe's boat and travel across the north side of the island over to the northwest part of the island. Over on the northwest side is, is typically where you find the muskox this time of year, according to all of my research. And so that's what we'd really hoped to do. But with the wind blowing 25 to 45 out of the north, it really it precluded boat travel. And so as a result, we were limited to that area by Macoriuk, and we were really limited to where we could walk to, um, which was a little disappointing, but so. what, do you, what can you do about the weather? Have my map, GPS, gun and bullets. <laughs> okay, well, we'll call you when we uh, have a muskox. I'll give you a call on tech base. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Okay, this is my uh, 300 uh, Winchester Browning. Uh, it's an A-bolt. It's a medallion that I got when I was 16 years old. I just love this gun. It uh, really has uh, shot well for me for many years. So what we'll do is we'll set up this tent, get all of our gear put away, grab our guns, and then go look for some muskox tonight, right? Yep. Cool, I mean, I think we have five hours till dark. That's the middle step. So that first day, when, when we got out there, camped, what we found was is that Nunavak Island is primarily tundra. You'll walk from some drier areas, especially in, uh, when the elevation gains, and then when it gets a little lower, it's very swampy. And so if you don't have good boots, your feet are gonna get wet. Um, has a canister full of white gas, but you can't bring in the uh, butane canisters because you can't fly with one of those butane canisters. There's a little tube going from the canister to the stove. You pump it up, turn on the valve, and presto, we have some flame. You can't wait to eat, huh? Yeah. You eat some of it before it's uh, cooked? Yeah, I'm hungry. Uh -huh. I think it's hot enough to cook my dinner. It's starting to bubble. Well, kiddo, we're all packed up and ready to go. Okay. Which way you want to head? That way. Yeah? West? So my father did a little bit different hunt than, than we did. He went out during the winter when Nunavak Island is frozen with a lot of snow and you have the ability to get around either on dog sled uh, or on snow machine. Unfortunately for me and Matthew, we didn't have it so easy. We drew the fall hunt. It's a limited number of permits. There's only 10 issued every fall. And fortunately, Matthew and I were able to secure two of those permits. And there's no snow machine to bring you around this very large island. I believe it's the largest island in the Bering Sea. And we, we were on foot as opposed to on snow machine. All right. We're gonna cross this river, kiddo, so we need to pull our um, waders out. Right on, dude. You made it. We've been hiking for a, a good portion of the day. Really a lot of land out here, a lot of rolling hills. We haven't seen any muskox yet. We've seen a lot of birds, uh, no reindeer. Um, but, you know, we're not giving up hope. We'll keep uh, plugging along, see what we can find. We do have reason to believe that there's a couple of muskox out here. So it's just a matter of us being able to locate those things and then uh, putting a stock on them. This is some pretty tough terrain. You're going up and down and up and down. But I know it's a pain 
up and down, a little squishy. Really, really easy to twist your ankle on this type of stuff. But you can sit back in them like this and get out of the wind a little bit. Look for the muskox coming by. I'm waiting for that big herd to run right into my lap here. For the next six days, uh, we just looked and looked and looked for these muskox. And you'd think on an island that's full of rolling hills and you know, not a lot of peaks, that if there were some muskox around, you'd see them. But boy, these were like the ghosts of the tundra because we didn't see any muskox. We hiked that first day, I don't know, 15 miles, I think, 12 miles uh, that very first day. And we saw old sign, but we didn't see any fresh sign and we didn't see any muskox. Okay, so we worked our tails off last night, made it back to camp uh, pretty close to dark. Got up this morning and decided to regroup, headed over here to this um, hill. So we're on top of about a 400 foot hill and we really have a good view of a lot of acreage, a lot of miles um, in every direction. I was so excited when we, when we drew this permit because it was going to be me and Matthew going to Nunavak to hunt these muskox and instantly I couldn't help but think this is so cool. My dad shot a muskox, I'm going to shoot a muskox and my son's going to shoot a muskox. So it was just, it was something I was looking forward to all summer long and then into the fall. And then of course we had just a terrific fall of hunting together. We had just got back from a sheep hunt uh, where, we, where Matthew was able to shoot his very first sheep. You're out there hiking, you're, you're working, you're pushing your limits, you're not quitting. When you need to go up that next hill and you just bear down and say, hey, I'm gonna go up that next hill. If I wanna get that sheep, I need to go over this hill. And after I go over this hill, if I have to go over the next one, I'll go over the next one. Before I went on the sheep hunt, I was a little bit concerned about Matthew. He's 14 years old, he's a big, strong young man, but it's not a hunt for the weak. It's not a hunt for the average person. You need to be willing to put in some serious effort and pain in order to go on a sheep hunt. And so I was a little worried about whether he could hack it. And I tell you, after about day two, I had no more concerns. This kid was like a little mountain goat. He could go up those mountains uh, just as well as I could. And so I started taking a little weight out of my pack and throwing it in his pack to try to slow that kid down. And I tell you, I was so proud of how he did on that hunt. There's a ram right there, 307 yards away. He's working his way up the hill from the glacier that you can see in the background. Well, we were up on that hill behind us, and we knew they were right over this little hill below us. And we kind of watched them move up the flat area. And then the smaller one came up over the hill and just stood there. As in, shoot me, shoot me. We waited for the bigger one to come up and shot him. We've seen a few muskox sized bushes and muskox sized rocks. We just haven't seen that elusive muskox, have we? Yeah. Let's try going up here by the way. Okay. We would go off to the west, we'd go off to the south, we'd go off to the southeast, we'd go off to the southwest, and every day you know, we would go out, we'd hike out four or five miles, and, and then we'd swing around four or five miles, come back four or five miles, and the whole time we're glassing, and so we could see 
quite a ways out into the distance. We were covering a lot of ground looking for these muskox and we really began to doubt ourselves as to whether those were muskox we saw on the way in because gosh, you know, um, we just didn't see them. Really? You see, you see the water way out there? Yeah. On that hill, just on this side of it. So we walked over to the south end of this hill. We actually went to the top and over, over the top of it to the south side of the hill. And then we glassed off to the east. And then we walked back over to the west and we glassed the west side. And then we glassed the uh, northwest side looking for muskox. We didn't see any muskox tonight, but we really were only able to glass for about an hour and a half. Are you gonna sit, have a seat here? Yeah. Okay. So it's pretty windy up here right now. We're going to pick up some grub, get a good night's sleep, and get up and go after them tomorrow. I remember thinking as we were coming close to the end of the hunt and we hadn't seen any muskox, part of me was really disappointed that we didn't have a muskox, but it only took a second to sit back and reflect on the hunt and say, wow, you know, I've had an amazing time out here with my boy. It's been six days or so uh, away from civilization and really enjoying the wilderness with my boy. Holy howling, huh? Saw this cool little fox came right in on us. Had no idea we were there until he was really close, but no muskox. We ended up extending our trip an extra day because we were really wanting to get a muskox, even if it were just one at that point in time, really worrying at that point about how we were going to get the meat back if we were to shoot one that far out. So I brought my GPS with me just because it was an island that I was unfamiliar with. I hadn't been there before. And so I brought my GPS with me to mark the camp and, and generally uh, guide us through where we were going. And by the end of the trip, we had, we had walked well over 30 miles by the time the trip was over. We're traveling quite a ways west of Macquarie at this point in time when we came across two muskox on the side of this hill. And as they started to skyline a little bit and then come down, below the uh, skyline. Oh boy, you should have just, you could feel the excitement. So we spotted these muskox. We were about four miles away and we made our way all the way up to 238 yards. They're right on top of this hill skylining. You can see them skyline and then they go back behind it, skyline, go behind it. We're gonna get on our bellies and we're gonna crawl up to them, get a little closer, take a good look at them before we decide what to do. We finally found the elusive muskox, the muskox we had searched for for nearly a week. So it was pretty exciting at that point in time. Our adrenaline was going and, and there was nothing that was going to stop us from getting these muskox. We want to make sure we're downwind. So the stock was awesome. The stock was just fantastic. Matthew and I had just been on a sheep hunt and those sheep can see you from miles and miles away. And so you really develop a good stock by being a sheep hunter. So when we're coming up on these muskox, it was as though I didn't have to say anything to Matthew. He was ready to go. He was down on the ground. He was crawling. I was doing the same thing as we're moving closer and closer to these muskox. We side-hilled it as we got below their, their um, vision so they couldn't see us. We were able to move quickly. And then as we got into a closer distance, we were able to get down low and crawl and then sort of just uh, 
crouch down and get closer and closer to these muskox. It was really a pretty cool stock. As we get up to this muskox, we could see this big one that Matthew was looking at, and we're getting closer and closer to this muskox, and there's not really a lot of cover. But the way we positioned ourselves with the wind and with the bushes, we were able to get so close to this muskox that it was just on the other side of these bushes. I'm watching Matthew and he's such a good hunter. He's been trained to not take a bad shot, not take a bad angle shot, and so he's waiting patiently to shoot this muskox that's 15 yards away. I want him to shoot, but I can't quite see his angle, and he has a good view of the muskox. Putting his foot down, he's gonna charge you. Oh. Yeah. Well, I can't see his feet. Yeah. He's gonna charge you. Boy, I've wanted to go out to Nunavak and hunt the muskox for so many years. What a neat thing to be able to say three generations of muskox hunters out on Nunavak Island. You shot the old one, I shot the young one. Uh huh. <laughs> How come I gave you first shot? Because you said shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs>